Go ahead and call the meeting to order. It is currently 6.30 p.m. Uh, citizens who have requested to address the council will be called on at the appropriate time to make your comments. I do have all your speaker cards here. Uh, and if there are any students in attendance and we aren't done by nine o'clock, which we probably will be tonight, we'll take a short break and sign your form so you can go home. Uh, will the deputy clerk please call the roll or the clerk, excuse me, sorry. Okay. Thank you, Mayor Sports. Councilmember Lombardi. Present. Councilmember Scog. Present. Councilmember Myers. Present. Councilmember Martinez. Present. Deputy Mayor Madewell. Present. Mayor Schwartz. Present. And absent is Councilmember Fancher. Yes, I would uh, entertain a motion to excuse Councilmember Fancher for tonight's meeting. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Consider Council Member Fancher excused for this meeting. Uh, we will now stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Cedric Eklund will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance this evening. Thank you, Cedric. Okay, does any council member wish to move a consent agenda item to a business item for individual discussion and vote or make any other modifications to tonight's agenda? Okay, I would accept a motion to approve the agenda as presented. So moved. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Okay, we'll go ahead and do citizen communication. Uh, the council invites citizen comments to hear from the public on matters before the council or relevant to the council's business. The council values free expression of all points of view as an important democratic value in this community. Each speaker is allowed a maximum of five minutes. If others have already expressed your views, you may simply indicate that you agree with the previous speaker. The council expects respect for those who have positions with which one may disagree, so debate or interactive discussions are strictly prohibited. Please refrain from applause after each speaker, only address your comments to the council and not to staff or to the audience. Council may request staff research comments received for a potential future action. Please take private conversations outside. When you are called to speak, please begin with stating your name and city of residence for the record. Uh, and we do not have any remote speaker registrations this evening, so I'll go ahead and start with Amy DeLuigi. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Perfect. Hi, I'm Amy DeLuji in Grand County, Moses Lake, Washington. Um, I'm back up here trying to tackle this um, uh, food court thing, and we've kind of are at a standstill, so I'm respectively asking for all of you guys' help. That's what I've now been directed from the attorney was to shut me right up this big uh, documentation, spend 31 hours in it, and then she's like, no, go talk to city council. My attorney got intervened, and he did let her know that he's not representing me. This is not a legal matter. This is a code matter. So we have two, basically, in order for us to motion forward to be able to work with planning respectively. It's something that we're super hyped up to do. We're super excited. We've been working on it for quite some time. We've put a lot of time and money and resources into this. We just got to get over basically the hurdle to be able to attempt to work with planning. So back again, we're talking about the 150 foot rule in regards to is that an entryway? Is that not an entryway? Is that considered a restaurant slash um, cafe or is it not? I've come up, I presented a very good um, amount of documentation to you, at, for, uh, to you guys to be able to look at the Washington State Food Court or food code that addresses whether something's considered a food establishment or a non-food establishment. I think I did a very great job pointing out that he's not a food establishment. I also pointed out the fact that he uh, compromised with uh, F, um, FDA as well as the Grant County Health Department in order to be able to prepare food in the back. Um, he had to deem that a non-entryway, uh, which they motioned forward and did so. In order for that not to be, or to, if, to be an entryway, he would have to do 
a mass of reconstruction inside, making it ADA compatible. I also have, uh, just letting you guys know, I have a mediation with the Department of Justice and him as well because of the lack of compliance. He has zero compliance in regards to ADA. So I'm just kind of reaching out to you guys. We want to take that next step. We want to be able to start the planning. Uh, we got about a month before we want to start to break grounds. We've already had to put our fence on hold. Um, we've also reached out to almost, uh, I want to say since I was last up here, I reached out to every city co county or every county. I reached out to every food hub. I was able to understand that they're not making extra codes. What they do is they just follow the Washington State Food Code. When they create addendums, they create addendums too. It's super simple. It's not this months long of dragging it out, of having to go back and forth on these things. It's very simplified. It's very compact. I think the food code was uh, updated as of last year. It's very easy to read. It's got a lot of linguistic uh, linguistics in it so you can easily make cross analysis. So at this point, I'm kind of just reaching out to you guys to help us make that decision. I think it's pretty clear if you need anything else from me of whether we're going to call that a restaurant or a, um, a cafe and obviously is it an entryway. If we can get that answered tonight or even put it on the next um, for the next city council meeting so you guys can go ahead and review what i've already submitted that would be awesome it would allow for us to go ahead and motion forward with you know uh, our concrete people the people that are going to do water electrical and get everything up and running in a as quick as a fashion as we could because spring's coming very quickly and we, we want to get these guys in line so if we can get an answer on that that would be great and then thank, thank and then you. even if we can't do it now help me Help me sure. so I know which avenue I got to take, and I'll take that avenue. Uh, great. Th thank you for coming again and for being persistent. No problem. Honestly. Yeah. Um, I appreciate it. I have a few comments on this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, again, thank you for this. Yep. Uh, we, we as the city and, and the building and planning department are undergoing quite a significant code update uh, you know, revamping those things, land use issues, and mm -hmm. how that department generally works. Mm -hmm. uh, is it a process that's very quick? No. You know, and we we are frustrated by that sometimes, but it's a large document to fix. Um, and so individuals from our own community that bring issues like uh, this to us are very important to that process. Thank you. And we've actually asked people from the building community and things like this to participate in this. So you're showing up here tonight is valuable to us. Um, I will say that I understand some of the issues surrounding this, you know, that there's a neighboring business involved here. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I want to set that aside for now because mm -hmm. I, I don't think that's really the issue we're talking about here. We're really talking about what does it take to get your own business established here, correct? Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty confident that we're taking steps to get a good food court code mm -hmm. or food truck court code in place. I understand completely what you're saying about the Washington State Food Code and how each of those entities should operate while they are on your property. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some other considerations that we have to, to take into account here. So um, I think we're probably a lot closer to a resolution on this than we were a month ago or so when you first brought this to us. So mm -hmm. there has been a lot of conversation on this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let Kevin take it from there. Thank you, Mayor. Just uh, for the council and for Mr. Lugis. So we will have a study session at the next meeting, uh, 30 minutes prior to, just like we did tonight, to talk uh, food truck code, um, uh, bounce some options off of the council at that time, and then we will have an ordinance. The ordinance. I believe is fairly, uh, a lot of it has been written, but there's some unanswered questions that we need to get some input from the council on. And so once we get that, we will have an ordinance for you. So this uh, issue should be resolved, if not in two weeks, within the next four weeks. Great. And then I also, um, I went ahead and I gave them, uh, I've been working with the, oh, the city, Kennewick, the, um, the planning department with Kennewick, and I was able to get theirs. It was super simplified once again it all follows the washington state food code um however it still doesn't help us in regards to because right now um right now if we could get past the hurdle of the linguistics because the food code 5.07 states 
you cannot be within 150 feet of the entrance of these, right? Yeah. So we've determined, and even just reaching out to your own local health department, that that is, you can't have a no entryway and an entryway. Understood. So if that could, if we could just answer that, get that question answered, like, you know, yes, Ms. Deluja, we're going to allow for you to go ahead and utilize that. We understand that. Um, um, we can, we have all come to an agreement on something, then I can pull my plans, I can start yeah, mapping I think, stuff out. Yeah, I think that Kirsten's aware of the, the exit and entrance, 150 foot requirement and all of those. Things. I I had a brief conversation with her today about mm -hmm. it, and, and she understands where you're coming from. Quite quite frankly, I think that if you, if you come next week or next meeting when we yeah. have the study session, again, I apologize that it's gonna take you four meetings now I know, yeah. to get this issue resolved, but if you come next week, I think that we'll have the proper context to have all that conversation in. And you may find that actually that the 150 foot or entrance exit um, issues you're having with linguistics and all that might just go away. Well, well, that would be great. And Dustin, just so you know, this was asked for, from me back in October. So when um, Peterson had original, originally asked, well, when Miss, when Kirsten asked Peterson uh, to have me do that, that was the goal. The goal was because of the fact that I took into consideration that nine people went into a meeting and not one of the per not one person realized, oh my gosh, they took linguistics from a wrong legal map and then made a determination on it. Sure. They, th that was the goal. They were like, hey, Mr. Deluji, go get this accomplished for us because I did it. I did it very quickly and very completely, and then work with us. And so it was never supposed to be me going back and forth into a city council meeting like this. And I um, I'm very appreciative that it's most forward but it was supposed to be simplified it was like you know and I, I don't have a lot of time in the day my hours are very costly let's just put that out there so if I'm putting time and energy into something that wasn't just for myself it was for the city as well it was for everybody who wanted to participate in this I did it because I was actually motioning forward to help them and myself at the Un same time understood so. we appreciate that I think we've and got a, a couple more questions yeah. from from the council members if you don't mind yes please uh, Councilmember Myers. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to show appreciation that we are getting some movement. I'm glad to hear, you know, study session coming next meeting. Uh, I just ask if we could have a couple examples. Kennewick uh, has a great mm -hmm. food court um, that's not run by the city. That's a private business. So yep. just a couple examples and then we can tweak it to make it. Looks and then like, I believe I CC'd you on that because the planner actually sent me the code so you guys could physically see that. And a lot of that stuff in there in regards to like fencing and stuff, that was all investments I was planning to independently make to protect the to protect the entity inside. So, I mean, I'm pretty much geared up. I just have to I, everything that I need to do is just going to be proactive and on all the um, contractors at this point. I've done I've done a really good job. This is an emerging market, so sure. Mm -hmm. I don't think we'll even have just one food court. There could be multiple. You Absolutely. can take one on every single. That's what I'm saying, you guys. Like, uh, you know, I didn't just do this for myself, and I love to help you guys. I'm super intellectual. Okay. I mean, we have one one more yeah. question for Mr. Absolutely. Scott. Absolutely. The, the 150 foot. There's their back door. Yeah and your fence. Yes. And from their back door to your fence is how far? I want to say 10 feet. 10 feet. Yeah. And if the 150 foot rule applies, you would be 140 feet into your lot before you could put I'm pretty much where the taco, well, I could push it all the way back, which would slam it all the way back, and or it would slam it all the way this way. So that doesn't work. It wouldn't be ideal. But so, the, but the question is ultimately boils down to: Is that back door an entrance to a restaurant? No, it's not considered one because the Washington Grant County Health Department made a deal with him because he prepares food on the other side. It's in environmental contamination. There's actually a code against it. So the FDA and the Grant County Health Department made a deal with him and said, if you're going to be preparing food, it has to rem be remain closed at all times. They even got after him because. Um, when he was illegally cooking food, and I'm not trying to get him in trouble, but I'm just pointing it out to, for ventilation. He was opening the doors and short story. Yeah. Um, okay. But the ultimate thing is, if is is that if that is considered an entrance that people can walk into and buy food, then the 150. That would be applicable, up. sir. Absolutely. Okay. But if they can't walk in there and buy food, then we're going to say probably say it's not an entrance. Correct, sir. At which point the 150 foot would be not applicable. Okay. Yeah, that's what that's Thank what you. we're trying to get okay. at. Okay. Thank okay. you, sir. 
I think we're going to move on to the yeah, next person. Awesome. Amy, please be here next week, obviously. I will be here next week, for Perfect. sure. Thank and, you. And if Our you next guys meeting, I'm sorry. And if Thank you guys you. need anything from me, I am extremely proactive. I've got I know a lot of people. I've been working very hard on this and I'm here to help you guys. Perfect. And I can get stuff done very quickly if Certainly you allow for me to bring do something. your notes next week. I appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. <laughs> next up we have Cedric Eklund. Hello, my name is Cedric Eklund from Moses Lake, um, and thank you for letting me do the, the Pledge of Allegiance. That was an honor. Um, uh, while we're doing the code update, is it possible for us to possibly emulate some of the already established food codes um, as long as we follow the Washington State Food Code, uh, just in lieu until we find something uh, within the Moses Lake Code? Um, that was one thing. And then the other thing was, um, who potentially would I contact about finding more information out or uh, kind of figuring out where we're at. Because similar to where Amy was saying, we're kind of at a standstill with uh, where we're at, and I'd like that to change. Sure. So I think the, the best course of action for this kind of particular meeting, issue would be to show up next week, of course. Again, I next meeting. Yeah, I, I'm aware. Uh, I apologize. It's taken this long. Um, again, it, it, the that piece of code is just one section of code that we're looking at right and, and there are numerous sections so um i think we're happy to move this particular section to the forefront for now so absolutely sounds good you said that, uh, next, next week. meeting you, you guys are going to be doing a study session about 30 minutes before yes two weeks okay next meeting okay and then um, to, to your comment about using code from other jurisdictions, that's become somewhat of a common practice. So we're all for that. Sounds good. Thank you very much for your time. And Kevin, has, you have a comment? Oops. Do you have a comment? No. OK. All right. Thank you. Thank you. OK, next up we have Lisa Delugi. Good evening, Alicia DeLuci, um, Lisa from Moses Lake. So thank you so much with regards to the food court stuff. This is really awesome news. I like to see progress. Um, and thank you for my son doing the flag salute as well. That's and That was really cool to be able to um, witness. Um, also, so they were going to show up last week. That's why I was like, next meeting, not next week. So then they don't show up next week and not be. So please don't take any offense to um, that that um, kind correction. So the reason why I wanted to just talk to you guys tonight is because um, you guys have a contract with Hope Source. And for the last year, every week I bring about 10 pizzas and have about a $200 tab there um, in, in pizzas and or other things. And I've always gifted them my receipts. When Kathy was working there, she actually would give me my in-kinds that I would send over to my sponsor. And after they fired her, that stopped. But they continued to ask me for my receipts and have collected them for the last year. And it's about, two, like I said, it's about $200 a week. And um, then last time I talked to them, or the second to last time I talked to them, they told me that they lost about three months worth of them. Thank goodness I have my backup. And so I was able to replenish um, proof of all that and whatnot and asking for the in-kinds for my sponsor if he, he wants to um, go ahead and use it for a tax write-off or not. So I ran into um, Brittany, who works for Hope Source um, last week, and she informed me that they don't do the in-kinds, that it's the city that does it, and that I need to discuss it with you guys because they're just a vendor. I don't have time to play this monkey in the middle BS, um, and I find it to be extremely concerning um, that she's a professional and that they've been making me jump through these kinds of loops. I'm extremely disappointed and frustrated, and I don't want to start getting angry about it. What I would like to do is maybe if one of you guys want to take the reins on that, and um, who, I mean, where do I get the in-kind for, for my sponsor? Because $800 a month, approximately, and times 12 is, um, that's, sure. that's, 
a, you know, a nice chunk of change and whether or not he needs it, which he probably doesn't, it's still in responsibility for him giving me the opportunity to do this um, project and and disperse out pizzas for the homeless. He, at, at the least, I'd like to be able to say, hey, if you want this, here you go. Everybody else has been really gracious about it. New Hope, um, the Sir Moses Lake, um, uh, the Cancer Foundation, um, Youth Dynamics, everybody's really awesome about it. And for some reason, like I said, it's, it's who wants to handle that for me, please, and thank you. Okay. Um, I think we can get clarification on that, but uh, everybody understands what the question is, correct? Uh, I, I do, I just gotta figure out to what, uh, what exactly she's looking for. We can talk afterwards. Okay. So it's just the in kind for the last years of um, food distribution that I've um, gifted out for through or for the sleep center and the homeless people. And so, like I said, originally I was getting the in kinds from Hope Source. And then after you guys questioned them, that's kind of around the same time that all of a sudden they weren't giving me my in kinds, but they were still taking my receipts and asking me and being persistent to get my receipts. And then supposedly they lost three months worth. And now they're saying this, and that's just too much in the wrong direction for me. I'm not in the third grade. Elizabeth Mar 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 Marillo, if I could say it, is our uh, homeless coordinator and uh -huh. she's the one you would probably get a hold of. So I would say get a hold of her tomorrow. And if I've already can. talked to them and Brittany told me that they're just vendors. It's your responsibility and to talk to you. And I'm, I don't want to play monkey in the middle. I've already talked to them multiple times. So what I'm asking for is if you guys could go ahead and get the in kind and email it over to me, that would be super fabulous. And if you would like for me to extend the um, written recordings of the receipts, um, I can, I have those pictures. I can email those to you now email so that you have them. Uh, Lisa, email those to me, and then I'll talk to Elizabeth tomorrow. Okie dokie. Thank you, Kevin. I greatly appreciate that. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, and thank you. Oh, sorry, I'm not supposed to. I'm only supposed to address you guys. Oops, sorry. <laughs> All right. Okay, we do have one more. Uh, Miss Linda Karen. Good evening. My name is Linda Curran. I live uh, in Village Park. That's where my mobile home park is. Uh, home is situated on Grape Drive. Been there since 98. <laughs> um, we have a dangerous situation. Um, the intersection of Marina Drive, I believe it is, and Broadway. When you're coming from Marina Drive, entering into Broadway, Whenever we have, like right now, we have the gun show, the signs are pos positioned in such a way that it blocks the view. And I'm afraid, and I've come close, that we're going to have an accident there if it isn't done soon. And I did talk to the man in charge of the gun show. He says, well, I present positioned it where the city, council, city uh, ordinance was. And I says, well, I realize that, but didn't you look once you position it well yeah it looked okay i realize you have to go out of ways so what i'm asking is that we could have consider having a or, new ordinance made that created that would uh make it so any signs most of them are usually just you know temporary but that the signs would be when you're looking towards uh michael on the leg the street is not straight, it curves. And that makes the problem. And when you're looking that direction, if the sign was placed behind the telephone pole, instead of always in front, now I don't know how many feet that is, I didn't measure it, but looking that way, if it's behind the pole, you can see all the way down the street. But every time those are posted right there in the way, and I already showed you the picture. So I would appreciate if you'd really consider changing that. It would have to be especially for that area. But this is an ongoing problem. Every time there's a show or during the uh, elections, those signs are placed there. And a lot of people drive that area, and I have to drive it twice a day, uh, week, because I take a gal to church. 
-hmm. And I just hold my breath and pray. And it shouldn't be that way. So I'd appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, any other? Any everybody questions? understands that particular intersection, correct? Uh, actually, well, <laughs> that's true. Linda did show me a picture earlier tonight. I'm familiar with that intersection or that piece of grass because I put a sign there at one point. Um, but anyway, actually, go ahead, uh, Deanna. Okay. Um, this is more question for city staff. Um, or maybe you know the answer since you're familiar with the sign. Um, is does it meet the requirement? Because it can only be up so high. If it was just placed behind the pole, you wouldn't have to worry about the height or anything uh -huh. because it will not block that area. It's from it's usually placed in front of the pole to the corner, okay. and that right away blocks it. And yes, the higher ones do, but you still, if you're in a truck, you might you're be fine. able to see over. Right, right. But I'm in a little cruise, and there's no way. <laughs> Could, could we at least double check that it's not or it's not breaking the rule of, of the height while yeah, we it's, it's more the, the right and then, yeah I think I, I'd like I would like uh, us to consider a change in the ordinance I see what I'm seeing and it um, is a lot more signs for businesses um, and free advertisement then uh, in a lot of those spaces that signs are allowed so it's not just um during uh you know events or shows or or during election but um we're starting to look like a bigger city with a lot of extra signs that but you know once I don't they know. Plus, yep. place one somebody yes. else will say oh i can do that too right and now i did talk to the man that placed it there who's in charge of the gun show he says if you can get somebody to move it i will authorize it i don't have anybody right now but so, he said definitely he would be glad to have it moved, but I don't know who can do that. So, Mayor and Council, so we do have an ordinance that requires it be uh, so far from the curb line. Uh, I have had code enforcement in the past go look and make sure that it's back. In that intersection, we may need to adjust the ordinance and move it back further than, mm -hmm. than what the ordinance allows yeah, because of the site distance issue. So I've already made a note of it on my, uh, uh, I will chat with code enforcement tomorrow and see about altering the ordinance for that one area. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Victor? Thank you. Yeah, so I'd be more than happy to meet you tomorrow as well um, at that location. So if you want to show me visibly and we can look at it I'm in person. Sorry, I'm not here. If you'd like to meet tomorrow, I'd be more than happy okay. to meet you there. We can pick a time okay. and then just go over it exactly. Um, because typically the signs um, are supposed to be no higher than four feet. I think it's oh. four by four. It's, and council member, what I, I'd I say is know, that, that's a staff well, you can issue. See by the staff picture. Deal. Okay. No you worries. can see by the picture. I can show you the picture. Okay. Yeah, Thank wait, you. The staff staff will deal with that. Tomorrow. You can't yeah. see over it. <laughs> I heard one suggestion that we just not allow signs in that patch of grass. We will have the sign code in its entirety coming back to you in this code rewrite. Obviously, there are some very um, strong constitutional issues with sign regulations. So you'll have to start with the limitations and work within those limitations. Well, the, well, the area is so big that it's kind of like conducive for signs. It's just we need to have it back. <laughs> OK. OK. We'll bring it back. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, does council wish to have any business brought to a future meeting? No, okay, I'm going to go ahead and skip the mayor's report before that since I don't have anything. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the city manager's report, Kevin. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, two things, uh, first is you see the fourth quarter financial report in there that Madeline uh, completed. Uh, we turned out pretty good last year. We were a little bit short on our revenue, which was because we didn't do the uh, construction of the police department. So we, we didn't put that $15 million in the revenue. Uh, and we also came up uh, about $25,000 less on our expenditures. So we were actually sitting pretty good last year. So if you have questions about any of that, um, feel free to ask. And if not, I'll move on to the second thing I've got. Okay. Number two is, is uh, as you've uh, we've been talking about with this TIP 
uh, project up there at Yamazawa 17. We've been talking about the roundabout. Uh, we do, uh, we are required to put a roundabout in there. The, the fourth uh, arm is off the table. Uh, as I mentioned at our uh, committee meeting today, uh, I went up and met with DOT a few weeks ago and they adamantly said no. So um, we will be required to put a roundabout in. What they are going to do is they're going to give us what's called temporary access to the area, which will allow the city to build the roundabout at the same time the developer can build the roads. So we can do both at the same time. When both are complete, then they'll give us access, permanent access to, to the site. But at least this gives us the opportunity to do that. Staff has got some uh, SCBG money to, is that correct, SCBG? STBG. STBG, to, to about $1.2 million or so uh, for design and some construction money for the roundabout. Uh, the staff has also uh, submitted a request to TIB money, tra tra traffic improvement uh, district money. That's not right, but TIB um, of about two and a half million dollars on top of that. Uh, we think we have a pretty good shot of getting that money because of uh, some of the dynamics of that intersection. So we're hopeful that we've got just shy of $4 million to build the roundabout. Uh, we are looking for additional uh, grant funding to help cover maybe the ex the last million dollars to do it. And then if we can come up with the funding to do it, uh, as we talk about the TIF project, that, you know, that $5 million for the roundabout could possibly be covered in grant funding. We may not have to bond for that. And then there may be some decisions as council would have to make in the future. So, um, and the hope is the roundabout is currently in design phase right now. Uh, I, the construction wouldn't start until next year. So, questions, comments, concerns? Do we know what our current bonding capacity is? So, we, <laughs> not yet, but Madeline will have an update on you real quick. Okay. We're actually in, in discussions right now with our bond council. And we are going to be, Kevin and I are going to be meeting with him to identify projects that potentially we, we would go out for bond for. And then at that point, once we identify those projects, he's going to tailor a study session and present to council with the options that we have. And at that point, he'll also talk about our bond capacity at the same time. And that, that should happen hopefully probably in the next, I'm guessing maybe month to six weeks. Yeah. So we will have that pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, I think that's pretty important to have right yeah. now, right? Yep. Um, and then if if the grant process is successful and all of that, what what is the anticipated timeline that we could start construction on this? Uh, next next summer, more than likely. The TIB money wouldn't come available until December of this year, so it wouldn't even be the two point five million wouldn't be available until the first of next year anyway. So construction wouldn't happen until next year, twenty five. Okay. Any other questions? Yep. All right, moving on to the consent agenda. Um, I'm going to recuse myself from this vote as I have some interest in item E. So Deputy Mayor Madewell will take over the vote for this one. See if I can do this right. So move to approve the consent agenda as presented. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Moving on. Uh, we have no old business scheduled. Uh, New business is item number two, which is hazard mitigation plan update resolution 3971. Which Mr. Foreman was so excited about he left already. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would entertain a motion to adopt the resolution 3971. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Okay, short meeting tonight. We have 
Finally, administrative reports. Mayor, I don't believe we have any. That is crazy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, council committee reports. Council member Myers. Nothing to report. Council member Martinez. Um, I did. Uh, well, the city of Moses Lake had an opportunity to send one more person to AWC Action Days in Olympia. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, we clearly have some issues that we're facing here in the city, but what uh, I was happy to to hear um, is that our our issues really um, we can. Oh, because we're over here, because we don't have cities right on top of each other, on top of us. Um, some of the problems that the West Side are dealing with um, sound a lot worse than what we will have to deal with. So um, it just, um, you know, ferries, housing, transportation, um, you know, some cities being told that they have to create so many uh, housing units, but without any help from the state um, to get them to to that um, magic number. So anyway, it's just was a reminder that um, it's nice. We have a beautiful city. Yes, we do have our issues, um, some things that we important uh, issues that we need to deal with. But uh, overall, it's nice to be over on this side. I appreciate it. Um, one more thing from uh, the action days, of course, we are um, we get to have our governor come and speak with us. And I just wanted to um, really touch on this and um, what I believe to be an important issue, which is uh, initiative 2117, which would repeal the cap and trade program or the it's also known as the Climate Commitment Act. Um, which the governor and the majority party, which is the Democrats, um, pushed through. Um, and there's an initiative to recall or repeal that, and that's the initiative 2117. Uh, you'll probably see it on our ballots in November. Um, the majority party, especially the governor, wants to um, claim that it's going to take a, a lot of money out of our state revenue um, to uh, potentially pay for some of these transportation issues that the West Side is dealing with um, and Spokane. Um, but the reality is, is this particular um, Climate Commitment Act, uh, the cap and trade program, has done nothing but increase our costs over here. So um, higher uh, gas prices, higher food prices, um, businesses, of course, are as I'm sure uh, if we were a business owner would uh, be handing those increased costs down to their customers, so us. So um, just be aware uh, if you have any questions about the initiatives, you want to um, go to Let's Go Washington um, website. They're the ones that have produced these initiatives so that you get an, an actual clear understanding of these initiatives. This is just one of many um, that will help us taxpayers to hopefully gain a little more control over our own pocketbook. Um, I'm also available to a, uh, answer any questions too. So. Um, those were the two things out of um, the AWC action days that I um, uh, wanted to share with you. The other thing is it is um, February. It is uh, Women's Heart um, Health Month, or it's Heart Health Month for everybody, men, men and women. There is um, more of a push to make sure that women understand that what men experience when they're having a potential heart attack are different than what men experience. So we may just push it off as women and say, oh, you know, I'm tired or, um, you know, it's it's something else. But unfortunately, we do that as women and we kind of push things off and I'm too busy, you know, I need to do this, I need to get the kids here, blah, blah, blah. Um, but we really, um, have tried to focus on the issues that women face um, and the symptoms. So just to uh, make you aware, uh, the typical symptoms of you know chest pain, sweating, um, pain up into the jaw that men experience um, is is slightly different or different than what women might experience, which would be shortness of breath, fatigue, nausea, vomiting, back pain. So not necessarily that chest pain. So if you are experiencing any of those symptoms, then um, 
we ask and we try to educate uh, other women that those might be signs that need to be um, addressed. So don't just put it off because that could be uh, symptoms of, of uh, a heart issue. So those are my two things and sorry to take so long. That's okay. Uh, we I'm have a, a short meeting. Heart health. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate that. Uh, Council Member Skog. Thank you, Council Member Lombardi. Sure. <clears throat> uh, the Port of Moses Lake, we're currently still at 150 as far as planes, and you've heard me in the past use that number. Um, generally, what the public doesn't uh, know, just because an airline wants to take delivery, uh, a lot of these planes have to be recertified, and the process is very long. Um, it's cumbersome. And so uh, I expect that number to kind of still stay at that for a while. Um, generally, the number of planes there will range on a low end from, let's say, 120 to as high as 200. So we're kind of in the middle, but until these planes get certified, uh, recertified, um, deliveries won't take place. Uh, the other thing, though, on an exciting level is that there are a number of chip and battery companies from overseas that are looking to uh, be at the port, um, especially from Korea. And so it uh, wouldn't surprise me in another year or so if we see a few more uh, chip and battery companies perhaps creating more jobs and more revenue for the city. Um, at the municipal airport, um, they're dealing with uh, new leases and old leases and trying to coordinate that and so forth. Um, they are in favor of the new insurance plan, which uh, apparently we just approved. Mm -hmm. So um, they're uh, excited about that because it gives a little bit more coverage uh, for their events that they want to do. And I would expect that there'll be a few more events uh, in 2024. Great, thank you. Deputy Mayor Madewell. I don't have anything, thank you. Oh. Deputy, <laughs> excuse me, Council Member Martinez. Sorry, I did want to um, commend the finance. So uh, today we had a finance committee meeting um, a, a lot of it is just uh, transferring money that was um, um, allocated or was supposed to be allocated in 2023, and for some reason we didn't have that expense, so we're moving it over to 2024, um, which all makes sense. Um, but uh, one thing that stood out to me today was that there is an expense um, that's been requested, and this has to do with um, the safety of our city staff and whenever there's an emergency, um, being able to notify people. Um, and it, it was surprising to me that we, we don't have that already in place. But with this um, system that we're asking um, to, to purchase and to get set up, um, I really want to commend everybody for, for thinking that way and making sure that our city staff are safe, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, um, a uh, weather problem or um, uh, a physical uh, danger problem, um, I, I'm happy that you've prioritized safety of the city staff. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see, I don't have much other than I will be attending uh, a mayor's function for AWC next week over in Olympia, and then I'm also representing the city at the birthday celebration for the Emperor of Japan on Friday, so that should be exciting. Um, I know just in Seattle. So. <laughs> uh, at any rate, I think that's all I have. Uh, the next regular council meeting is February 27th, 2024, and we'll go ahead and adjourn. Mayor, Mayor, we're going to an exact session for 20 minutes. Sorry, I've forgot to inform you all we'll be going into an executive session for a period of 15, 20 minutes 20 minutes to discuss uh, litigate possible litigation possible. no action to follow thank you there will be no business to follow uh,